alongside Chris Broussard. I'm Kevin Wilds. Yeah. Nick, we're just going to go to the Let, show. Yeah, we let's go. We have, two, we have breaking Wilds news. Will make it a this is why it's good we do a hot pie. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's good our show is truly live, Wilds. Why? We, we this restart. happened moments ago. Well, moments. It was about an hour ago. Yeah, well, okay. Still. We start with the end for Darvinham. <laughs> He finishes his Lakers tenure with a 90-74 and 74 record, a Western Conference Finals appearance last year. Uh, In-season in tournament. In-season tournament. Oh, yeah, don't forget about I don't that. Th I think that's up. They hung a banner. Yeah. I think that's up. Now that it's is nothing. Right. No, it, it is was something. a banner. I think it is something. No, you're right. You know what I mean? Now it's nothing. It is something. All right, Brew, yeah. do you want to go? Where do the Lakers go from here? I'm not saying Darby Ham was Red Arbach. Okay, you keep saying that. <laughs> right. No, my point is this. Ty Lue's who you want. Yes. He's got a year left on his deal with the Clippers. Even if he doesn't coach the Clippers, which I don't know why he wouldn't next year, you think Ballmer, Steve Ballmer, their no. owner, is letting him go down the hall and coach? No. So my point is this. Rather than bringing a retread or J.J. Redick, who, who knows what he could do, yeah. let Ham stay one more year. If it doesn't go well, then you can get Ty Lue. What if you bring in somebody next year, Budenholzer, Reddick, whoever, and it doesn't, you know, it's okay. It's about like it was this year. And then Ty Lue's available. Now you're going to be like. But you can't, if you're bringing back LeBron, which they want to, you can't be doing anything saying. I get that. Well, a, you, that, you, you know, know year 22 time. is going to be a holding pattern. And then we're going to. Yeah. So, but but I, you don't know what you're, like, I just don't I, see any names out there. There's no I, Phil Jackson no, out that, there. You know what I'm saying? That That's that, fair. That's all I'm saying. But I. Listen, I do not think Darvin Ham is the main culprit for the Lakers season being over. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest culprit is the draw. That the, right. the, the who they drew in round one is is getting the Nuggets. I know it sounds weird coming from me because I said if they were ever going to beat them, they should want to play them in round one. But it was obviously the toughest possible round one matchup that they could get. I think the second biggest culprit, and you can't hold the draw accountable, is the front office. You can go chapter and verse on missed draft pick from this year. The guy's taken, you know, three, the three picks directly after JHS, Jalen Hood, Shafino, who the Lakers took, all contributed this season. Mm -hmm. You can look and back to the helped, fact yeah. that the Lakers drafted Jaden McDaniels and then traded him for Dennis Schroeder. You can look back to the fact that I saw last night I know they lost, but Buddy Heald, who was acquired midseason uh, for nothing yeah. as by a team that was trying to contend get someone. The Mavericks, who I believe we're going to be seeing for quite some time in this postseason, remade their team without – it's not like they paid four future first-round picks. And they, they made these moves. The Lakers did none of that. So I hold the front office most accountable. Unfortunately, the front office seems to be Jeannie Buss – Linda Rambis and and godfathered into the bus family, uh, Rob Palenka. So they're not going to be accountable. So then you look at the head coach and say, do we think this year he got the most out of the team? I don't. You, we can disagree. I personally don't. And then the next thing is, do we think fair or not? And I think it's fair that the team was the players had disengaged from him. They had. That's true. And do I think that Darvin, if there was any chance of saving his job, however slim it was, has the accountability of, he did an on-the-record quote saying, without saying it was Austin Reeves, we know who he's talking about, right, right, right. Austin Reeves was bleeping the bed to Dave McMenamin. He had to know it. Well, oh, so gone. I'm just not going to feel badly for, for for him. I don't think he did a great job and I don't think he connected with his guys and I think at the and I think he didn't do a good job of ever doing the I need to be better. It was a lot of they well, need to play harder. I think at times he did that and at the end of the season, who else was bringing up the injuries? LeBron. At in the after they lost to the Nuggets, LeBron was like, "Look, it was hard to know what we could be because every, you know, somebody was injured here, then we get whole, and then somebody was injured again. We never were whole. I also say this, Nick, it, it, whether it's Darvaham or whoever, a front office can empower a coach. And they never did that with Ham. And I get it, there's no Pat Riley there. But we saw Pat Riley do it with Eric Spolster. Yes. When the players wanted him fired, he was like, look, if you're going to win, it's going to be with this guy. All right? And so they had no choice but to listen to the coach and buy in. The Lakers could have done that with Ham. 
But they're, the front office is looking for a scapegoat. That's it's not, correct. Right? They're looking for, let's put the blame somewhere else. And again, switching coaches every two years is ludicrous. The, the, and Wilds, go. The, no, I'm not. I, I'm, go ahead. No, you have a good tweet. I saw it in your prep that I think actually speaks to the problems. I know, but because that supports your take. I don't want to start a fight this early in the day. No, go ahead. But it's 3 o'clock. You're, but you, you're, you're, hold on. Wait, you're a tiger. You're, you got to keep it. Hold on. I got him caning. Hold on. I got him caning. Then, then all you get, you he's just the, sitting there licking what his What is paws. the tweet? The, I didn't uh, see can we I put up? I, I don't know. Oh, no, this is Bill's yet. tweet I wrote. Bill, just Bill Simmons. Here's the what I. We're talking about the front office moves was Bill Simmons' tweet, but go ahead. Okay. Then you shouldn't have picked them to succeed this year, if that's the way you felt about the front office. And they shouldn't have had a big exactly. piece of title pie. Yeah. And they should. Okay. You should yeah. have picked Lakers and six over the Nuggets because all the issues that you talked about existed before yes. everyone had all of this optimism. And then once it went down the tubes, as some people could see, yours truly, no. all of a sudden it switches and be like, man, we needed Alex Caruso. No. Well, you didn't need him. Two weeks ago, no, when the Lakers right. in seven was trending, and they had a big slice of title pie, and LeBron can make a run at a championship, and you're saying they're the sure. second best team. So no. now, but now it's all switched, and poor Rob Polink is like, "Oh shoot, I shouldn't have traded KCP seven years ago." No, no. Was. So hold on, but these are, I, I guess, I this is where this, and it's not going to start a fight. Okay. But this is where multiple ideas can be held in someone's head at the same time. Mm -hmm. I believed this was. Not a very well-coached team and a poorly constructed second half of the roster. I'm not calling – you but know you what I mean? But you thought it was going to win but the championship? I, but, but, well, I didn't I – I never picked them to win the championship. I said I picked them to beat the Denver Nuggets going into this series is what I did. I made the mistake of I, – I guess mistake is fair – of being like, you know what? I believe this is the greatest player I've ever seen. He's healthy, and I think he's going to have one last amazing act in him. And he's going to, despite all of that, not – so for, as a for instance, Wilds, the 2018 Cleveland Cavaliers were one of the most poorly put-together teams I've seen. I thought the Kyrie Irving trade was a joke what they got back from him. They remade the roster on the fly in it. I picked that team to go to the finals because mm -hmm. I thought LeBron could carry him. He and the did. East was weak. And, and the East was weak and LeBron was brilliant. It did not mean that at the end of that year I couldn't say, Kobe Altman, you did a bad job. Yeah. That it, and now that team I thought was well coached by Ty Lue. And this is where the point on and Bruce point on the in-season tournament or when people were like Vogel won a championship. Sometimes you can overcome coaching. Sometimes people can even believe you will overcome coaching. But that doesn't mean that when the season's over, you don't want to have a sober. And that would be like, in my opinion, saying, oh, now you want the Chiefs to upgrade at receiver. They won the Super Bowl. Like, no, they did despite it, but they still need to improve there. Even if the Lakers had beaten the Nuggets. I wouldn't have think that, oh, Darvin Ham's a great coach. Now, maybe he would have done something in the series that changed my mind, but it would have been hard for me to believe it. That's where, that's where I'm at. Okay. Um, all right. Do we have uh, replacements or no? You got nobody? That's my point. I mean, it's going to be a retread or somebody we have no idea whether he can coach or not, well, J.J. Reddick. Well, that's the only option. J.J. Reddick. That's, that's what I'm saying. But in life, it's always either a retread or a new no, guy. Every single coach they bring in I mean, <laughs> will have been criticized at some point to the same degree, if not more, than Darvin Ham. So, Mike Budenholzer, Kenny Atkinson, Phil yeah. Handy. Yeah, so but every I single coach, Sam Terry Stotts, I want to so Sam Cassell, would so be, I Cassell has paid his dues. I, yeah. He would be an interesting so one. Here, I think Sam should have been at a hand. You're right that guys, if they hire someone who's already had a job, they will have been criticized before. What those other guys will have that, in my opinion, Ham didn't, is also people that were like, hey, this guy was excellent at this. This guy was excellent during this time. People loved what Kenny Atkinson did with the Nets pre-trade. Yep. People appreciated Yeah, but I, that was but, a whole different – right. that was a bunch of I, guys of who aren't that talented. No. That, that's a different type of coach than a team with LeBron no, and AD. No doubt, and I totally agree. I wouldn't My do that. point is at least those guys – would have, if it's a, you know, a job interview and you have references, people that would call in supporting them and people that would call in saying, eh, I'm not sure about it. I don't think right now, if Darvin were applying for a job, I don't think there were a lot of people be like, hey, here's what I loved that he did with the Lakers. Here's what, the, what his brilliance was. I don't think that would be there. The bottom line is this. They were looking for a scapegoat. 
This wasn't a horrible season for the Lakers. They just met the defending champs in the champ in the first round. Oh, well. Had they not, we both think they could have got to the finals possibly, or at least to the conference finals. This wasn't a terrible year, but they feel like it was. They went out early, so we got somebody has to pay the price. That's all this is. It wasn't going to be the buses. It wasn't going to be Palinka. It certainly wasn't going to be the star players. But they all hold some but accountability I, too. So I. But don't you? But the. the it, <laughs> Do you think that it, 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 scapegoat is the term that rubs me the wrong way? Because scapegoat implies that someone didn't deserve it. Yeah, totally Do, blameless. Like, blameless. Yeah. I think no, Darvin I'm not Ham, saying he was blameless. I, I, think, I think Rob Belinka is at the head of the spear of blame pie. But after that, and I know folks and it, it would be like, oh, we're, we're not going to lay anything at LeBron's feet. I think LeBron played up to his ability this postseason, and I think throughout the year looked like somewhere from the 8th to the 12th best player in the league. I don't think he let the Lakers down. I don't think Anthony Davis let the Lakers no. down. If the Lakers' plan was we need that guy to be the best player in the league, then they overestimated a guy who's about to be 40 years old. I do think the coaching let the Lakers down. I do. I don't think that makes him a scapegoat. All right. 